Hey everyone, I just got my hands on the new River 2 Pro and wanted to show you what's new and improved from the original River Pro. Let's jump in and see if it's worth the upgrade. The biggest change is on the inside with the switch to LFP battery chemistry. It's now rated at 3000 cycles, so you can use this every day for 8.2 years and still have 80% of the battery capacity remaining. The older River Pro's NCM battery is only rated at 800 cycles, or 2.2 years, so it has a much longer lifespan. It's also better for the environment and safer because LFP cells don't tend to start on fire like NCM cells can. EcoFlow also increased the battery size a bit from 720 watt hours to 768. Even with the heavier LFP batteries and larger capacity, this is only about 6 ounces heavier at 17.2 pounds, but it's a bit bulkier overall. In the new version, you unfortunately lost the ability to add an expansion battery, but I think that's okay for a unit designed to be ultra portable for camping. They also dropped the flashlight feature, but honestly, I never use mine, so it's not a big loss. It now includes both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to connect to EcoFlow's really slick smartphone app. That gives you control over the ports and offers advanced settings for charging speed, X-Boost, and more. It'll automatically pair to the app, so there's no need for the IoT button on the older Pro. In the box, there's a wall charging cable, car charging cable, and 5521 cable. Now keep in mind there's no MC4 to XT60 solar connector in the box, but EcoFlow packages them with their solar panels, or you can pick it up as an accessory. They more than doubled the warranty to five years, which is a big jump from the previous model's two-year coverage. The River 2 Pro retails for the same $650 as the original. For launch, EcoFlow has dropped the price to $600, and you can save an extra 5% off with my coupon code in the description, which brings the price to only $570. If you order in the first week, you'll also get a free River 2 Pro bag and extra Eco credits. One of the first things you'll notice is that they move the handle from the top of the unit to the back. Now I think this is a really great improvement because now we free up all this space on top. Unfortunately, they did not include a wireless charger on top, so that space can only be used for either stacking other units or putting things on top. When I'm camping, I actually use this as a little night table, so I'll put my phone, my keys, maybe a flashlight up here and keep everything organized. The bright, crisp display shows the same information as the last generation. Time to charge or empty, state of charge, input and output power, and port status. I prefer the blue and white color scheme from the original versus the River 2's monochromatic display, but it works great. While the River 2 Pro had AC outputs on the right, the River 2 Pro moves all the outputs to the front, which makes them a lot more accessible. The pure sine wave inverter has been upgraded from 600 watts to 800 watts, and there's now four AC receptacles instead of three. So what can you run with the River 2 Pro's inverter? Well, I think this is best for running smaller electronics like a laptop, TV, gaming system, stereo, CPAP machine, or internet router. It can run medium-sized appliances like an Instapot or my Ninja Blender, but it couldn't power my full-sized fridge or espresso machine without overloading. Yes, it has the X-Boost feature that helped me run this 950-watt space heater that was tripping an overload with it off. Now this works by dropping the voltage to stay under 800 watts, so it's only good for cases like this where it's just a bit over the limit and it's a resistive load. Don't believe this will magically run a 1600 watt appliance. It's just not how it works. I tested the 800 watt rating by running it for 20 minutes and it ran like a champ with minimal fan noise. When outputting max power, the fans were very quiet at 42 decibels at one meter, which is only five decibels louder than the background level. I could pull up to 950 watts for around 20 seconds before overloading, so there's a decent amount of headroom for searches. In the AC capacity test, I pulled a steady 150 watt load for 5 hours and measured 660 watt hours, which is 86% of the 768 watt hour capacity. That's way better than the 75% I measured on the original River Pro, which is impressive because the inverter is so much more powerful. To check standby losses, I left the AC ports on with nothing connected for 12 hours, and it lost 20%, which translates to 1.7% or 12.8 watts per hour. That's a bit more than the 10 watts with the original River Pro, but that's the price you pay for a larger inverter. The River 2 Pro also has an EPS feature that lets you plug in critical appliances like a web router, and it will switch from wall to battery power within 30 milliseconds. The DC output ports are unchanged with a 12 volt port and a pair of 5521s. These are regulated so the voltage is steady no matter how charged the battery is. 
I pulled 10 amps for a full 20 minutes, but did notice that the voltage sags a bit below 12 volts when pushed to the max like this. In a 5 hour DC discharge test, I pulled 650 watt hours or 85% of the rated capacity, which is very good. Standby power losses over 12 hours were only 2%, so you can leave the DC ports on and not really worry about wasting energy. The River 2 Pro is ideal for small van builds where you're running 12 volt appliances like lights, fans, and a compressor fridge with its regulated output and large battery. I tested this with the new Glacier fridge running dual zones at 34 and 0 degrees Fahrenheit and it powered it for more than 36 hours. The USB ports are pretty much the same as before with a single 100 watt USB-C port and three USB-As. However, in this update, the USB-C port is now bi-directional, so it can be used to charge the River 2 Pro. It wouldn't charge with my smaller River 2 units because the protocols can get a little confused on whether it's supposed to be charging or discharging, but it worked great with my Anchor power bank at a full 100 watts. I pulled 120 watts across all four USB ports and it performed flawlessly. Charging multiple USB devices is a strong suit for this unit, so it's a great thing to grab if you want to power your drone, laptops, tablets, or phone. In fact, I pulled 220 watts continuously from USB and DC ports together for 20 minutes. I then attached a space heater to really push it and was able to pull 1000 watts across AC, DC, and USB ports at the same time. This little thing has impressive output. EcoFlow moved the AC and DC inputs from the left side to the back, which I think is a good move. They also got rid of the cover over the ports, which makes it faster to plug in. Wall charging has been upgraded from 660 watts to 940 watts. It charged from 0 to 80% in 47 minutes and all the way to 100% in just 70 minutes, exactly as advertised. Unlike other recent EcoFlow units like the Delta II, I found the fans to be very quiet. When charging at full speed, I measured 40 decibels at 1 meter, which is only 8 decibels louder than the ambient background noise of 32. Here's what that sounds like. You can also adjust the charging speed in the app in 50 watt increments, which is handy if you want even quieter charging. You can also charge this from your car at 100 watts with the included cable, just like the previous generation. I used the River 2 Max as my car surrogate and it worked great. Solar charging has been bumped from 200 watts to 220 and can support panels from 11 to 50 volts at up to 13 amps. I tested this with the EcoFlow 220 watt bifacial panel and got 219 watts peak and it fully charged the Pro on a decently sunny afternoon, so it's a perfect match. I was curious if it would charge from solar and wall at the same time. I used this DC power supply as my solar panel to confirm that it would accept up to 50 volts. However, as soon as I plugged in the wall power, it stopped pulling power from DC, so it does not support dual charging. I also tried charging it with USB-C and the wall at the same time, but as soon as I plugged it into the wall, it stopped pulling power from USB. Now that I've put it through its paces, I'm very impressed with the new River 2 Pro. It ticks all the boxes I'm looking for in a modern, portable power station, including an LFP battery, powerful output, fast charging, smartphone app, quiet and efficient operation, five-year warranty with excellent support, and a fair price at 85 cents per watt. There are a few downsides you should keep in mind, including a lack of expandability, wireless charging, and there's no light. It also can't charge from AC and solar or USB at the same time. These are all minor complaints, and I think this is the best portable power station under a kilowatt hour on the market right now. As far as competition goes, for the short term, the main competition is the original River Pro, since it can be found for as low as $400 on sale. If you don't need as much battery storage, the River 2 Max is also a great option at $469. I don't see a big difference in what you can run on its 600 watt inverter versus the Pro's 800 watt inverter, and the other features are pretty much the same. The Blue Eddy EB70S is probably the closest competitor. It is a slightly smaller 716 watt hour LFP battery, 800 watt inverter, and includes a wireless charger and light, but it has a super slow and loud external 200 watt wall charger brick, no smartphone app, and a super basic display that doesn't even tell you the exact state of charge. It feels super dated, and I definitely wouldn't pick it up over the River 2 Pro. The new Blue Eddy AC60 is sort of like a waterproof EB3A with expansion battery support, so it's an odd beast. Its 400 watt hour battery and 600 watt inverter is probably a closer match to the River 2 Max, but it's worth a look. 
Anchor, Jackery, and Goal Zero don't have a unit at this size, so for top tier brands, there aren't a lot of options. You could look at budget units from Pecron, Ace Vault, and a million other brands on Amazon to save a few bucks, but I haven't tested them, so I can't vouch for them. So to wrap this up, I think the River 2 Pro is the best portable power station you can buy right now. These are perfect for a small car or van camper setup that needs to power a compressor fridge, fans, lights, phones, tablets, and other gadgets. They also work great in a tent or around the house to give you power where you need it. If you need a more powerful and expandable unit that can power pretty much anything you can plug into the wall, then step up to the Delta 2. If you don't need quite as much battery capacity, look at the River 2 Max or even the River 2. All right, hope that was helpful. Let me know what you think about the new River 2 Pro in the comments, and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more reviews of EcoFlow products like the upcoming Glacier Fridge and Wave 2 Heater and AC. And if you want to pick up the River 2 Pro at launch, use my 5% coupon code in the description to get it for only $570 and get a free gift. Thanks for watching, everyone. Till next time.